Welcome back to the Dr. Jonette channel. In today's video, I am going to be talking about how you can use neuroplasticity to give your brain a workout. You may have signed up for a gym membership at the beginning of January with the intent of giving your body a workout, of strengthening your muscles and maybe even losing a little weight. So neuroplasticity is how your brain works out or how you can exercise your brain to give it a workout and get it stronger. Just like at the gym, when you go to the gym, you work out the muscles in your body. When you exercise your brain, you work out the muscles of your brain. Neuroplasticity is the process that your brain uses to change the muscles. Now, there, your brain doesn't actually have muscles. What it has is neural connections or the connections between the different neurons and when you exercise it you increase those neural connections you not only increase the number of neural connections but you also increase the strength of the neural connections so if you want to improve an aspect of your brain say you want to improve your memory you want to improve your problem solving skills maybe you want to improve your people skills your emotional regulation. What you want to do is strengthen those connections within your brain that will then let you perform or do those tasks that you want to do. When you go to the gym, you will notice that it's arranged in different areas and each area of the gym works out a different area on your body, a different muscle group. It's kind of the same with brain exercises for your brain. Different exercises can work out different areas of your brain and strengthen different skills that you may want to work on. Today, I'm going to talk about six different brain exercises that you can do to strengthen different areas of your brain. The first exercise is actually physical exercise. Now you may be wondering, how can physical exercise strengthen my brain, strengthen the neural connections in my brain? Physical exercise is what I would equate to the stretching exercises before you work out at the gym. You want to get your muscles ready to give them that workout. And it's kind of the same way with your brain. You want to give your brain cells the nutrition and the energy that they need to work for you and to strengthen. So physical exercise brings blood to your brain. It increases the blood flow within your brain. And when you increase the blood flow within your brain, you bring into your brain oxygen which is critical for all of those neural processes as well as energy energy in the form of blood sugar or glucose physical exercise also helps our body regulate the amount regulate our blood sugar or our glucose our brain is only three percent of our weight of our body but it requires or uses 20 percent of the energy that we have in our body and in order to function at its optimum it needs a constant and steady supply of glucose that is provided by the blood supply to the brain so if we don't have adequate blood supply to our brain we don't get enough oxygen we don't get enough energy and we aren't able to give our brain the workout it needs and it won't work for us in the way that we need it to function and work for us. Exercise number two is those brain exercises that we quite often equate with brain exercises. I think of these exercises as our brain warm-up exercises. These exercises are things like brain teasers, brain puzzles, um, crossword puzzles, Sudoku puzzles. These are things that can work out different areas of our brain and exercise different areas of our brain in a more generalized way. If you find yourself 
wanting to increase your ability to pay attention, stay on task and focus, then exercise number three is the exercise you may want to start with. Exercise number three is activities that increase our ability to focus. They are mindfulness activities as well as meditation. Both of these type of activities help us bring our focus onto a single task, a single point, and holding our focus there. It's difficult to do in the beginning, and you will find that your mind doesn't like to focus on one thing. It likes to wander and bring in all kinds of thoughts. That's normal, that's okay. And when that happens, just pause, bring your mind back to whatever it is you are focusing on and continue with your mindfulness activity or your meditation. By doing this, you are able to tune out the distractions and allow yourself to concentrate on a particular task that you may want to accomplish. Exercise number four is one of my favorite exercises. For me, this is my connection to life exercise. It is social interactions, connection to our family members, connection to our community, connection to our neighbors. In other words, connections to all the people in our life. When we sit down and have a conversation and engage in a conversation, pay attention to the other person that we are having a conversation with and look for ways to gain perspective, to gain insight into who they are. We are strengthening those connections in our brain that allow us to connect and interact with the people in our life. These are the connections actually for kindness, for creativity, and for empathy. These are the connections that feed our inner and our emotional self. They are important for longevity. Many research studies have shown that when we connect with the people and have social interactions, that it helps broaden our perspective, but it also helps us live a longer, more satisfying life. Exercise number five is learning to play a musical instrument. This is actually a fairly hard exercise to do and it takes quite some time to learn how to play a new instrument, whether it's the piano or a violin or a, say, wind instrument. I remember when my kids started taking piano lessons they had to concentrate on what they were doing. It helped develop coordination. It helped develop both fine motor as well as some of their gross motor skills. And as they got better, I began to notice that it also developed another aspect, their connection to their creativity. When they would begin to improvise and begin to play and experiment with the different notes, with the different chords, that was when they really begin to have fun with learning how to play a musical instrument. Both of them took piano lessons for many years and it was a number of years before they actually begin to have all of the strength of the brain connections and neural connections that allowed them to really enjoy the act of playing the piano. And exercise number six is learning a new language. When we learn a new language, we are strengthening those neural connections that enhance our ability to think. We are connecting the areas in our brain for memory, for learning, for accessing not only working memory, but also more long-term type of memory. And neuro research has shown that this is one of the best ways to increase the connectivity throughout our whole brain. And we now know that when the more interconnected all the different areas of our brain are, the more successful we will be in all the different areas of our life. So learning a musical instrument 
and learning a new language are two of the top ways to increase the interconnectivity with all the different areas of our brain. Now that you know that you can use neuroplasticity to strengthen your brain and to enhance your life as well as contribute to your longevity, what exercise do you want to start with to do today? Put below in the comments what exercise appeals to you most as well as what area of your brain you would like to strengthen. When we begin a new exercise program, whether it's for exercising our body or for exercising our brain, it can feel overwhelming and that's normal and it's also okay. Pick one exercise and start small, maybe five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day. On a lunch break, do a few Sudoku puzzles and warm up your brain and start with some warm-up exercises for your brain. You don't have to sign up for a foreign language class or sign up for lessons to learn a musical instrument. You can still exercise your brain and start small by doing a few simple exercises. I've put in the caption below a list of different exercises that you can do to strengthen some of the different areas of your brain. They include some meditation, some mindfulness, some brain workouts, some cognitive workouts, and check them out. Let me know which ones you find helpful. By beginning to incorporate these brain exercises into your daily routine, you are able to unlock the full potential of your brain's neuroplasticity. Remember, due to neuroplasticity, it's never too late to start working out your brain, strengthening your neural connections, keeping your brain fit, flexible, agile, and slow down that aging process. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click the like button, subscribe, as well as sign up for notifications. When you sign up for notifications, you're gonna be notified when I post my next video. It might be a recipe, it might be a gardening tip, or it might be another neuroscience video. All of them interconnect and help you live a productive, healthy, long life. Also, if you're interested in taking a little deeper dive as well as getting more information, finding recipes to keep your mind and your body healthy, go to my website at growwithdrjonette.com and explore the recipes, the gardening tips, as well as the health section of the website. See you next time on the Dr. Jonette channel.